Hey YouTube, changed your indicators on your Grom or on any other bike and lost your DRLs. Um, well, hopefully these are the answer. We'll figure it out and I'll take you through the journey uh, for me to put in some rectifier diodes, which will hopefully allow me to have my indicators and my DRLs working again. Let's get into it. So first things first, um, I've got to take off the little bikini and the shroud behind the clock so that I can get to the back of my indicators. Now I've taken the little shroud off behind the clocks. I'm going to need to take this off again. Uh, I forgot so I can clean, get to the wires. Um, that's easy. You've got four bolts. One, two, and two on the other side. Three, four. I'll take those out and we'll come back to you. Once you've taken, uh, once you've taken your four bolts out, uh, very simply, your headlight unit will slide away. And uh, if you want to, you can just remove this little plug here and unplug the headlight so that you've got a nice area to work. Uh, I shall do that right now. So here we go. All right. Oh, incidentally, um, if you're interested in Grom modifications, I'll do, um, I'll do a review on all my mods and everything that I've done for this little bad boy. Um, my next is to put on a set of the Two Brothers Racing foot pegs. Um, and I'm going to be changing the front mudguard. I've ordered a, a carbon fiber monkey mudguard, uh, the monkey bracket to hold the mudguard and the fork protectors so I can have a higher level mudguard so that it doesn't get uh, all caught up with mud when you go off road. So anyway, um, with, I'm, gonna be, I'm doing this with my phone and um, it's going to be one-handed, so forgive me if it's a bit ham-fisted, but I hope you'll get the, the message. What we want is we want our LED turn signals to be on when we're riding along and to flash when we are indicating. Now, uh, with the, the Grom and with lots of modern bikes now, especially Hondas, you get three power cables for your indicators. This is the Grom. Um, this is the left hand side. This is the right hand side. You've got three wires. Now, the actual Grom indicators have a uh, stop tail bulb in them, like a normal tail light bulb that has your brake and your side light in it. So it can use these three wires because you've got a live, you've got, sorry, you've got an earth, you've got the live, and you've got the flashing live, which is for the, oh, sorry, this is for the DRL. This is the flashing live. But of course, when you've only got the two wires for the LED indicator, you can't connect them all. And if you do connect them all, what you end up with is you end up with your indicator light on and your rear indicator on, and it ruins the whole process because you you don't have a backlight um, or you end up driving around with your indicators on all day. So um, what we need to be able to do is we need to be able to connect these two wires to the positive wire of the indicator so that when the bike is on the indicator is lit but when you're indicating it stops being lit and starts flashing um, and that's really easy to do and we need to use what's called a um, uh, a rectifier diode there are different powers of those I'll show you the ones I've got in a minute mine are 400 volt 3 amp ones um, which will be more than adequate for the job uh, and we put one on each power line because what the diode does is it only allows power to flow one way. It doesn't allow, for example, the live feed to go into the bulb and then back down the indicator feed and light up the rear indicator. I actually show you what I actually show you what happens. So let me just um, let me just connect these up and I'll come back. So to this you. is the normal situation. Turn on the key, and when we turn on our indicator, it flashes but you want the flasher on, you want the indicator on all the time as a DRL. So what we do, or what I thought initially was, I connect this wire up so that it's on all the time. Oh, hang on. Let me just put a hook there. Connect this wire up so that it's on all the time. And then when you flick your indicator, it flashes. Happy days. I thought, oh, I've cracked this. So I put everything all back together again. Um, put the dash back, all the plastics up, tidied it up, it was lovely. Um, and I went to the bike with the indicator off. 
I've got my DRL on, but so is my indicator light. And so is my rear indicator. So especially with my backlight, it means that um, I'm gonna have no backlight working unless I'm indicating, which is no good at all. So um, what we need to do is we need to put a resistor in place to stop this information from this wire traveling back down the indicator into the bike. Um, and I'm just gonna grab one, I'll wire it in and I'll show you how it works. All right, so what I've got now is I've got the indicator feed going into the restrictive resistor. That goes into the power lead and I've also got the DRL lead or if you don't have a three wire system and you want your indicators to be on, your turn signals to be on as DRLs, then all you need to do is you need to take a switchable live um, from anywhere on the bike or car for that matter um, and power it to the indicator. Okay, so this is how you would want it. Now, remember, these diodes are one there. The purpose of the diode is to stop the power traveling from here up to here, but they're one way. So it will allow the power to travel from here down to here. So when I turn my indicate my ignition on, I've now got a solid DRL, but I don't have my indicator light on anymore. And I also don't have my rear indicator on now, but if I turn on my left indicator, it now flashes and I'm getting the flashing on the dash and I'm getting the flashing in the front. Turn the indicator off and I've got my DRL. So, you've got your earth lead for the, indic for the indicator, that remains connected as normal. You've got your indicator lead this is your power from the bike to power the indicator that would normally go to the red lead. That goes through the restrictive diode. And, and these restrictive diodes you can get on Amazon, you can get them from Jayco, you can get them from any electronics store. Um, I, I got these ones, these are the ones I got for my job. Um, 400 volt, three amp. Now, <laughs> 400 volt is quite high. They do, I think they do a 60 volt one, which would be perfectly adequate. Um, it doesn't indicate the voltage that it needs to run at it. The voltage is the maximum voltage that it can handle, but three amp is the current that it can handle. So three amp is perfectly adequate for a LED indicator. In fact, it's less, it will draw less than one amp. Um, and I've got this lot here, and this is what they look like. I've got this lot here. I think, I don't know. I think there's about 30 of them, 40 of them. Um, and it costs me, 16 Australian dollars. So very, very cheap job to do. So once again, you've got your earth lead, you've got your indicator live that goes through the restrictive diode that connects up with the live feed from the DRL, which can go straight through here, but it can't travel this way. And then down to your indicator. So I'm gonna button this all up um, with my, oh, by the way, when you're, when you're doing jobs like this, Years ago, we'd just splice the wires together, wrap some black tape around it, or we would go to the trouble of soldering. What I've bought, and don't go and buy them from an electrical store because you'll pay a fortune for them. But what I've bought is these little solder connectors. So you basically put your wire in, let's get a bigger one. You basically splice your wire together like that. You slide this over the wire um, and then with a heat gun, you heat this up and it self solders. Um, for about $15, you can get a box like this. Um, go to aliexpress.com, A-L-I, aliexpress.com. And you can order like, you know, a couple of hundred of these for any job you need. Um, if you go into a normal car spares shop, you'll pay like $15 for five of these. Um, it's a total rip off. Right, so, um, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll do this first green wire here so that you can see how that process works. And then I'll, then I'll button them all up and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm all connected. So come back to me in a sec. So we twist the wires. See that, sorry, it doesn't focus particularly well. Um, see the wires here. Twist them together like you do in the good old days before we put black tape on them and then wait for the resulting fire to happen. Um, anybody 
over the age of uh, 45 would understand that very well. We take the solder connector, we slide it over the splice together wires. Hang on, I'm trying to do this one handed. Um, let me, we slide it over the splice together wires so that the solder is in the middle of the twist joint. There we go. And then we get our heat gun and it will melt the ends to seal it up. And then you'll see the solder dissolve or melt. That's it. And now that's fully soldered. No soldering iron, no messing around with solder, no need for three hands. I did it one handed. Um, just let it cool down. And then you have a protected soldered connection. How easy is that? All right, okay, so I'm gonna connect up these, uh, do the other side. Uh, I'll show you once it's all connected up with the both lights working, uh, and then uh, we'll put the bike back together and we'll be done, one sec. Okay, so now we have all of the wires soldered up. Got our indicator wire coming in. Remember that these diodes are directional, so they will stop power going one way or the other. Make sure you get it the right way around. It's easy, you won't blow any fuses. Um, Got my DRL wire or my positive wire coming from my ignition lead going to my indicator. Both are wired up now. And when I turn on my ignition, I get my DRLs. I get no indicator lights. I've got no indicators on in the rear. And when I use my indicators, it works as normal. Looks pretty cool, hey? Really easy, really cheap mod to do. Anybody can do it. There you go. Okay, job done. There you have it, everything back together again. Um, turn on the key. Got my DRLs. my indicators jobs are good and just round the back lights working properly sweet I hope that's given you enough information um, for now and uh, Watch your space for more Grom mods coming your way. As I say, I'm gonna be doing the high level front mud guard and uh, a couple of other jobs, foot pegs, and uh, I've got a custom seat coming from Comfy Seats with a custom bar pad, and I'll be changing up the grips as well to match. So, fully custom Grom. Thanks for watching everyone. Oh, just before I go, um, these, are, these are the diodes. They're the ones I've used. They don't have to be 400 volt. They can be anything from 12 volt upwards, but uh, typically you'll find 60 volts upwards. These ones are easy to work with because they're nice and thick. Um, this is the first time I've done a job like this, but what you find is some of the smaller ones are really, really fiddly and small. Um, at least for these ones, you've got a decent amount of wire to solder on your self-soldering connections to. All right, that's it everyone. Thanks very much. Have a great weekend.